the Seversky P-35 was an American single-engine, low-wing monoplane developed in the late 1930s by the Seversky Aircraft Company, which later became the Republic Aviation Corporation. This aircraft represented a significant step in the evolution of fighter design during the pre-World War II era, being the first single-seat fighter in the United States Army Air Corps to feature all-metal construction, retractable landing gear, and an enclosed cockpit. The origins of the P-35 are deeply rooted in the ambitions of its designer, Alexander de Seversky, and the evolving landscape of military aviation in the 1930s. But it was not his design alone. Many of Seversky Aircraft's designers were Russian and Georgian engineers, and in this case, Alexander Kartveli was his collaborative partner. The same Kartveli who would later become the chief designer of the remarkable Republic P-47 Thunderbolt. Seversky himself, of noble Russian parentage, was quite a notable aviator of the time. Learning to fly before the age of 14, Seversky entered the Imperial Russian Naval Academy, gaining a degree in engineering, and despite a critical injury that cost him a leg early in the war, went on to become the leading Russian naval ace of World War I. After the war to avoid the Russian Revolution, Seversky emigrated to the United States in March 1918. Here he worked with the U.S. Signal Corps as a consulting engineer and test pilot. But unsatisfied and fueled by 364 patents and the backing of Wall Street millionaire Edward Moore, he formed the Seversky Aircraft Corporation in Long Island, New York. Despite losing his company in a board coup, with it becoming the Republic Aviation Corporation, Seversky continued to be an influential figure in U.S. military aviation throughout World War II and into the late 60s. Before his death in 1972, he received the Harmon Trophy the Medal for Merit and the Exceptional Service Medal, and was enshrined in the National Aviation Hall of Fame. But I digress. The P-35 was derived from the civilian Seversky Sev-3, which had set a record for piston-engined amphibious aircraft reaching 230 miles per hour. The Sev-3 was conceived as a basic design that would allow for the installation of various engines to be used in roles such as the United States Army Air Corps Basic Trainer BT-8, a two-seat escort fighter, naval fighters, and several private racing versions. When the U.S. Army Air Corps announced a competition for a new single-seat fighter in 1935, Seversky sent the Sev-2XP, the Sev-3's second prototype, confident that it would win despite being a two-seater. However, the aircraft was damaged during its transit to the fly-offs at Wright Field. Fortunately for the company, the Army Air Corps delayed the fly-offs until March 1936, which allowed Seversky to rework the fighter into the single-seat SEV-1 XP with retractable landing gear and a different tailplane. As the aircraft was underpowered, the power plant was upgraded to a Pratt & Whitney R1839 Twin Wasp with 850 horsepower available on takeoff. The 1XP won the competition on the 16th of June 1936, beating the Curtis H75 in the finals, with the company awarded an order for 77 units, now designated the P35. It was 10 months and 2 weeks later before the first production P-35 was delivered to the Air Corps in May 1937. The final production P-35 aircraft was 25 feet 2 inches long, 9 feet 1 inch high, had a wingspan of 36 feet, and a wing area of 220 square feet. It had a cruise speed of 260 miles per hour, a service ceiling of 30,600 feet, it could reach a height of 15,000 feet in 6 minutes, and 54 seconds, and had a maximum range of 1,150 miles. The engine had a wide cowling, which enclosed one 50 caliber machine gun and one 30 caliber machine gun, and it could carry up to 300 pounds of bombs. Armament was completely inadequate when compared to the contemporary European fighters of the time. It also lacked armor protection for the pilot and self-sealing fuel tanks, which resulted in an aircraft 
that was very vulnerable against enemy fighters. As well, the main landing gear retracted aft and was partially fared, while the tail wheel was fully enclosed. The partially fared landing gear of the P-35 was a major drag issue, especially in an era where flush folding landing gear was becoming commonplace on new fighter designs. The Air Corps cited slow delivery as the reason for choosing the Curtis P-36 in lieu of the P-34 in its next round of 210 fighter orders, and this is probably fair. Siversky was also busy developing the two-seater version, the 2PA for an export market, as well as a single-seat export version known as the EP-1. But the lack of orders was also due to blowback from the secret deal to sell 20 units of the 2PA aircraft to the Japanese Navy. The fact that they would briefly be used in the Second Sino-Japanese War, given the Allied codename Dick, against the Chinese Republic government, who were supported by the U.S., should have warned Siversky against the sale. One cannot wonder if this unpopular move is what ultimately led to Siversky being ousted from his own company. Interestingly, when the order for the P-35 was placed in 1936 by the Material Division of the U.S. Army Air Corps, they stipulated that the last series of the aircraft should have the 1200 horsepower Pratt & Whitney R-183019 two-stage supercharged engine. The final P-35 on Siversky's contract with the U.S. Army Air Corps was completed in 1938, along with its new supercharged 1,200-horsepower twin WASP engine. It sported a revised wing and a modified landing gear. This aircraft became the single Siversky XP-41 prototype. So impressed, Siversky started a simultaneous company-funded project known as the AP-4, using the same specification, which became the production model for the P-43 Lancer. The single-seat export, the EP-1, was produced with the larger 1050 horsepower Pratt and Whitney R183045 twin WASP engine, along with the heavier armament of 250 caliber machine guns in the nose and 230 caliber machine guns in the wings. Sweden ordered 120 of these, identified for export as EP-106 and designated J-9 in service with the Flyg Vapnet to replace their fleet of aging Gloucester gladiators. Sixty aircraft had been delivered to the Swedes before. In mid-1940, the U.S. placed an embargo upon all aircraft overseas sales, with the exception of England. In October 1940, the remaining 60 EP-106s were requisitioned for the U.S. Army Air Corps and designated as the P-35A. Of these, 40 were deployed to the Far East Air Force in the Philippines, where they were assigned to the 17th and 20th Pursuit Squadrons. Six were delivered to Ecuador to form the first combat unit of the Esquadrilla de Casa, and three aircraft were kept in United States as instructional airframes for mechanics. Sadly, with the Japanese attack on the Philippines, as soon as the P-35 came under fire, Lacking armor protection and self-sealing tanks, the aircraft stood little chance against enemy fighters. By December 12, 1941, of the 40 aircraft that had been sent to the Philippines, only eight were airworthy, after either being shot down or destroyed on the ground. It was a dismal lot for the P-35 indeed. However, First Lieutenant Samuel H. Marritt gave the craft its rare moment of glory on the 10th of December 1941, when Marat is credited with the sinking of Japanese minesweeper W-10, following multiple strafing runs during the Japanese invasion of Vigan in northern Luzon. Reportedly, the explosion of W-10 was so powerful it tore a wing off of Marat's P-35, causing him to crash into the sea. Those not sent to the Philippines were used as advanced trainers renamed the AT-12 Guardsmen, or allocated during World War II to U.S. Army Air Corps Base commanding officers as fast transport aircraft. The name of Siversky was associated with record-setting aircraft of the 1930s. Versions of the Siversky Sev-3 held multiple records, including when, on the 15th of September 1935, 
a Wright Cyclone-powered SEV-3 established a world speed record for piston-engine amphibians of 230 miles per hour, a record which stood for 49 years. But alas, while it is a beautiful aircraft to look at, regretfully, the Seversky P-35 was pretty much a good idea not fully realized. But thankfully, it was in the hands of great visionary engineers who would take the AP-4 project to deliver the P-43 Lancer and ultimately the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, which became one of the most outstanding fighters of World War II. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and hit the like button. If you wish to see more like this, please subscribe to the channel and click the notify bell.